He has never ever failed me. I have a father. He has never ever failed me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never ever fail. I have a father. He has never ever failed me. I have a father. He has never ever failed me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never ever fail. You make a way of escape, and so we want to thank you that no matter the time and the season that has come upon us, you have a plan. And today, oh God, you begin to cause those plans to begin to manifest even in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Speak hope into our lives. Speak courage into our lives. Speak life into our lives. And let there be a cause to trust you more and more. A cause to believe you more and more. A cause to walk with you more and more. In the name of Jesus. Christ. Thank you. Even as you bless your word. As it comes up now. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the same shout, Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want you to move around and greet your brother. Move around and greet your sister. Tell him that he is special before God. That he is loved specially. Tell him that he is the beloved of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell him that everything that concerns him concerns God. Tell him that God washes over him. God sees your tears. And God is moving to wipe away those tears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I welcome you to today's service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I give God the glory for being with us and for the beginning of this service even up to now. And so we are in the hour of, of the word of God. Now I want you to always know that the hour of, of the word of God is the hour of expectation. It is the hour anything can happen at any time. If you are connected, if you are expectant, because God will send a word, and one that word is sent to you, there shall be a sudden turnaround. Suddenly, hopeless situation will become hopeful situation. Suddenly, bad things will be resurrected. Amen. That is the power of the word of God. Amen. To him be all the glory. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are going to talk briefly on what I titled The Hope of the Hopeless. Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. Praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me quickly to Psalm 65. Psalm number 65. And verse 5 says, but on Sundays in righteousness, you will answer us. O God of our salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth. Who can read it from Norman K. James? Verse 5. The Lord. Hallelujah. By terrible things in righteousness, we are answer us, O God of our salvation, who hath the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are apart from the sea. Hallelujah. 
You see, the psalmist was very, very careful. As a matter of fact, David, who is the one this psalm is attributed, was a man that has faced the situations and circumstances in his life. He has seen how hopeless situations suddenly turned around. He was a witness and a testifier to situations that were gloomy and suddenly light shone. And so we are talking about the hope of the hopeless, Jesus Christ. You see, hopeless, being hopeless is having no expectation of any good thing happening in a particular situation. Being hopeless is having no expectation at all of experiencing or recording success in one's engagement and activities. And when a situation cannot be remedied, when a situation cannot be redeemed, that very situation is called a hopeless situation. And I want us to understand that our hope is the essence of living. Hope gives us the reason why we should continue to live. Hope that one day your struggle will be over. We give you the strength to push on until you, the, the struggle expires. Hope that the battle of life one day we be won in your favor. We continue to give you the strength to continue to fight until you win. And unfortunately, we are living in times and in seasons when everything around us tends to be hopeless. We are when you look up, when you look down, when you look left or right, when you listen to news, all that you hear seems to be hopeless and helpless. And that is the unfortunate reality our times we are living in are presenting to us. to collapse. Family structures tend to collapse. Finances tend to collapse. Health tend to be weakening. And so it seems that there is hopelessness on every side. The child of God Isaiah calls us to look unto God and be saved because he alone is the hope of all the earth. Look unto me and be saved. For God is the hope of all the ends of the earth. Our scripture, Psalm 65, verse 5, tells us how God can perform on Sundays to restore hope. And David has been a witness to this. He said, By all Sundays of righteousness, you will answer us. You know, sometimes uh, you have prayed and prayed and prayed, and there seems to be no answer coming. And when such situation faces you, you discover that, that before you know it, that hopelessness has set in. But Sarah, the devil who has witnessed uncountable hopeless situation, turned around, is testifying to each and every one of us today that God 
who is a specialist in doing awesome deeds, even in hopeless times, is still alive in our generation today. He's still alive in your situation today. Amen. He's still alive in your circumstance today. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I want to encourage you today that if you have been facing a situation that is hopeless, look unto Jesus. Call upon Jesus. David said, with us on deeds of righteousness, thou will answer us. O thou who is the hope of all the ends of the earth. The Bible tells us concerning what happened to Lazarus. But before we get there, do you know that Jesus has already told us that a time of hopelessness is going to come. A time of helplessness is going to come. But he cautioned and encouraged us, saying, let not your heart be troubled. Because hopeless situation brings a trouble. It brings anxiety, uneasiness in our lives, worries. And say, in such a time and season, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because he alone is able to turn that very situation, no matter how how hopeless it is around. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said, In this world, you will have troubles. <laughs> In this world, you will have as troubles that become so hopeless in terms of the solution. But he said, Be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. I want you to understand that the world has nothing good to present to us. All that the world has to present to you is hopeless situation, is disappointment, is worry and anxiety. But Jesus, He who is the hope of the hopeless, Jesus, He who is the help of the helpless, Jesus, who is a master in hopeless situation is saying, let not your heart be troubled. For in this world you are going to have tribulations. But be of good shape. Because he has overcome the world for you. He has overcome the hopeless situation for you. He has overcome the troubles for you. He has overcome the persecution and the tribulations for you. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, the Bible is full of us situations and circumstances. Gives us a life that we are turned around when Jesus is involved. I want you to turn with me to the story concerning Lazarus. In John chapter 11. And we begin to read from verse 17. So Jesus, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around, Martha and Mary, to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But now, but even now I know that whatsoever you ask God, God will give you. Hallelujah. Mary and Martha, first a hopeless situation. 
their only brother and beloved to that matter, and also the beloved of the Lord Jesus, had just died. Not only that he had just died, but he had been buried. And he has been in the tomb for four days. And it was after four days that Jesus arrived in the sea. And you, it's good to understand the capacity that Jesus carries. It's good to understand the power that Jesus carries. For Martha did understand that. And so, though she was weeping because of the hopelessness of the situation, she was weeping because your brother Lazarus has died and is rotting in the, in the tomb, in the grave for four days. I want you to look at the picture of how hopeless the case of Lazarus was. Dead four days ago. Already buried in the, in the tomb. Already decaying. But immediately Jesus said, and she heard that Jesus was coming. And she ran and met him. And said, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But she quickly made another statement. That though my brother Lazarus is there, said, but I know. <laughs> said, but I know that whatsoever you ask the Father, he will do it for you. Do you know that Martha was actually saying, I know that the, the situation of my brother is hopeless. I know that we are faced with a hopeless and helpless situation. But Jesus, because you have arrived, but Jesus, because you have come, this hopeless situation, uh, as long as you and God are involved, uh, it shall be turned around for good. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And so the story continues. And the Bible recorded in verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will shall rise again. I want to announce to you that irrespective of how hopeless your situation is, I want to announce to you irrespective of how dark your situation is, I want to announce to you notwithstanding the storms that are battering you left and right, Jesus is telling you that that situation will change. Amen. If you believe, say Jesus no matter, your brother will live again. That's the reason why the Bible said that uh, if you believe, all things are possible. That hopeless situation is subject to change. I said that hopeless situation is subject to change. Amen. That that situation is subject to change. Amen. If you believe, and invite Jesus in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus said, Martha, if you believe, your brother shall live again. Amen. Child of God, if you believe this very God, he is able to transform a hopeless situation into a hopeful situation. Pray the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And Martha said to her, I know that he will rise again. <laughs> Martha continued to express a positive faith, a positive hope, even in hopeless situation. He said, I know that he will rise again. Child of God, do you know? Do you believe that that situation can change? Do you know? Do you believe that your situation can change? That the hopeless situation can become a hopeful situation. That the sad situation can become a joyous situation. That the dark situation that can become a, a light, that the light will shine even upon that very situation. That that very failure shall become a success. Yes, Martha said, I know that he shall rise again. Child of God, you are being challenged and called to know. You have been challenged and called to understand. You have been challenged to know, understand, and believe that God is able to do all things. And therefore, Jesus, who is the hope of a hopeless situation, when he comes, when he arrives, suddenly, 
there shall be a turnaround. Pray in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we saw how the hopeless situation of Lazarus suddenly turned around. Because Jesus was invited. Are you willing to invite Jesus into your situation? Have you invited Jesus into that very situation? Have you invited Jesus into that very circumstance? If you have not, there is still a window of opportunity. For when he comes, there shall be a turnaround. When he comes, we will return to joy. When he comes, sorrow will turn to dancing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to remember the story of Anuana. She was a woman that faced a hopeless situation. They ran away because of trouble in the land. They went to a foreign land, the land of man. His, her husband died. His two sons died. So she left hopeful and returned hopeless by her own confession and understanding. But by the orders of him who is a specialist in hopeless situations, God was leading her. God was directing her. And God instructed her daughter-in-law Ruth to never to leave her and Ruth followed. Do you know that Naomi told her Ruth that there is no hope for you? Naomi told Ruth, why are you following me? There is no need you following me. And some people are telling you, you have been following Jesus all this while. What is your hope? What is your hope? That was what Naomi was telling Ruth. You have no hope. Why continue to follow me? But she said, I have made up my mind. I have made up my mind. I will follow you. Wherever you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. He said, even where you die, I'm going to die. You. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. Men and brethren, Ruth understood this very God. That he is a specialist in turning a hopeless situation around. And that was the reason why she held this very God so tenaciously, so tight, and refused to be talked away from, from it. Many of us allow our friends to talk us away from keeping our faith. Allow our friends to talk us away from following God. But I want you to know that if you will decide like a root decided, never talk to me to leave you alone again. Nobody should tell you to leave this very God. Nobody should convince you to leave this very Jesus. For I tell you that outside Jesus, there is no hope again. That was the reason why Jesus, when a multitude began to leave Jesus Christ, and they said that following him is a hard thing. Doing his will is a hard thing. And he turned to the apostle and said, you too, are you not a living? And Peter answered, to whom shall we go? For you have life, and you have life, and you have life. I want you to know that for him, if you have him, you have hope. If you have him, you have help. If you have him, you have doubt. If you have him, you have success. If you have him, you have provision. Therefore, do not allow anybody or situation to talk you out, to talk you away from following him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so David faced a lot of hopeless situations as you saw. Just as Martha and Mary faced it. And so, David had a testimony. And surely we are going to see by the end that um, Mary and Martha also had their own testimony. And so Jesus said, I am the resurrection 
and life. He that believes in me, though he may die, shall live again. Jesus was saying, you see, the most hopeless situation one can find himself in life is facing death. Death is the most hopeless situation in life. Up to now, there is no remedy to death except in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I said, up to now, there is no remedy in death. Science, as advanced as it has gone, has never provided a solution or remedy to death. Once death strikes, science hands up because it is beyond science. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so Jesus said, I am the champion in hopeless situations. <laughs> so I am the resurrection and, and, and the life. And who will dare believe Jesus concerning his hopeless situation? Who will dare believe Jesus concerning her hopeless situation? For when he arrives, uh, yes, uh, the power that trans the power of transformation will hit that very situation. Praise the Lord. Do you know that Jeremiah was a prophet who understood by revelation concerning the hopelessness of the situations and the condition of the Jews and Jerusalem. And so in all his life he wept. That is why he's called a, the weeping prophet. He wept all his life and he was the one that wrote lamentation. Because he looked around and he found no hope. He looked around and he found no hope. And so I want us to go to Lamentation. Lamentation chapter 3. Hallelujah. If you read Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 26, you will get a clear picture of the pain in the heart and in the heart in the life of Jeremiah. You will understand how hopeless he felt. You will understand how helpless the situation of the Jews and Jerusalem was. But I want us to look at verse 18 from verse 18 to verse 26. Let us see what happened. Verse 18 said, And I said, My strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. <laughs> Keeping what was on the ground, he concluded and said that his strength and his hope have perished. That there is no remedy again. And he was lamenting as a man. And so he continued to say, I have moved. He continued to say, I have said my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my roaming. The one wood and the God, my soul still remembers them and sings within me. This I recall to my mind. Through the lost mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassion fell not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope. <laughs> he that has confessed that his strength and his hope had perished, then I came to understand to this understanding that the Lord has become his hope. He said, because of the mercies of the Lord, that his loving, his mercies does not cease, but they are new every morning. He said, for this cause he has what? Hope. As long as the mercy of God is still available to you, there is hope that that situation will change. There is hope that that hopeless situation will change. I said there is hope in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said the Lord is my portion. My soul said. The Lord is my portion says my soul. Therefore, I have hope. He, he was actually saying, as long as my spirit, as long as my heart 
continues to believe God, as long as my heart continues to trust God, as long as I continue to anchor my faith in this very God, he said, I still have hope. Men and brethren, I want you to continue to anchor unto God. I want you to continue to hook unto him, no matter how hopeless it is. For as long as you have Jesus, you have hope. Hope that things will improve. Hope that there will be a change. Hope that suddenly failure will you begin to record success in your life. Hope that suddenly you begin to see peace even in your life. Peace in your family. Peace in your body. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he continues to say, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. And so if you want to see a change in that hopeless situation, continue to hope in him. Continue to trust in him. Continue to put your, your faith in him. For when Lazarus became sick, they sent a message to Jesus and said, Lord, the man you love is sick. Hallelujah. In the midst of that very situation, they sent a message to Jesus. So, child of God, Never get weary in sending messages to Jesus. How do we send messages to Jesus today? Through yeah. prayer, prayers. So never get tired. Never get discouraged in, pre in praying unto him. No matter how gloomy the situation may be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so he continues. He said, my soul seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait patiently for the salvation of the Lord. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you that no matter how hopeless the situation you find yourself might be, Amen. continue to hope in God. Amen. I say continue to hope in God. I say continue to trust in God. Amen. Because life situation will not get better. Are you hearing me? Amen. Life situation will not get better. Amen. It will not, it will continue to get uh, hopeless. As days and years that go by, as the coming of the Lord draws nearer every day, things will continue to worsen. Hopelessness will continue to increase. Despair will continue to increase. Jesus said in the last day, the heart of man will fail them. And when hope evaporates, heart tends to fail. The Bible said that a hope deferred make the heart sick. You can imagine when hope is deferred, your heart becomes sicker. And when hope is destroyed, means what? The heart will suffer a heart attack. But that is not the portion of those who look unto the Lord. It is not the portion of those who trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For to us to continue to push on and live, we must continue to be hopeful and not be hopeless. You know why? Hopelessness is a thief. I say hopelessness is a thief. Yes, and it robs us of the joy which supplies us the strength. For this joy of the Lord is your strength. When hopelessness sets in, you have no strength again. And, it, and the, 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 the tactics of the enemy is to rob you of that very joy that is your strength. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we are not those who are ignorant. We are of those who have understanding to say no to hopeless situations. To continue to believe God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Know therefore, beloved, that the Lord takes pleasure in them whose hope is in him. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 147, verse 11. Psalm 147, verse 11. And let us hear the testimony of the psalmist. Psalm 147, and verse 11. 
The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, even in those who hope in his mercy. In those who hope in his mercy. Jeremiah mourned and lamented all his life. But the time came when he said, It is because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. For his mercies are new every day. Great is the faithfulness of God. I want you to know that your God is faithful. As long as his mercy exists, I want you to know that you have hope that there will be a change. This is the testimony of the psalmist. And he said, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. Fear him. There's a need for us to fear him, even in that very hopeless situation. There's a need for us not to join the multitude to commit sin. There's a need for us not to live the way the multitude, the world live. Let us continue to fear him. For if you fear him and hope in him, then you will witness and testify concerning the faithfulness of God in changing that very ugly situation. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. These days, every domain of life, every area of life, seems and looks as hopeless. Do I have a witness? I say in these last days, Every area of life seems hopeless, seems helpless. And that's the reason why we need God. There are some marriages that are hopeless. But God is ever present here in time of need. Most of us are having financial hopeless situations. Health hopeless situations. Career hopeless situations. Family hopeless situations. But child of God, your God is the ever-present help. <laughs> Don't forget that the title, the topic today is Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. The hope of the hopeless situation. So your God is the ever-present help in time of trouble. And we are living in times of trouble. And that's the reason why we should hold on to God. And that's the reason why we should hook on to God. And that's the reason why we should never abandon God. Because he will be ever present to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The world I want you to know. Breathes hopelessness. Because Satan is the God of this very world. But Jesus is the restorer of hope. I say Jesus is the restorer of hope. I say Jesus is the restorer of hope. Yes. The hope of the hopeless Jesus is. And he is the help of the helpless. He is the giver of joy. He is the giver of joy. And he is the giver of life. For if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. Therefore, our hope is in him who is able to talk to turn every situation alive. The Bible says that the expectation or the hope of the, of the righteous shall not be cut off, or the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Or that hope differed makes the heart sick. And all these are talking about hope. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. These are talking about hope. These are talking about hope. But I've come to present to you He who is the source of hope. Praise the Lord. And so, child of God, Jesus is your hope. Amen. I said Jesus is your hope. Amen. If your hope is in this life, you'll be pitied. But if Jesus is your hope, then you will rejoice in the end. Amen. Glory be to God. 
David said, I waited unto the Lord. Even in his hopeless situation, he called unto the Lord in his hopeless situation. And the Lord had him. And the Lord answered him. Today, who we call upon this God? Who is the hope of the hope of the hopeless? Who is the help of the helpless? So it doesn't matter how hopeless or helpless that situation is. Let us invite him, he that is the hope of the hopeless. Let us invite him that is the help of the helpless. For when he comes, hope shall appear. When he comes, help shall appear. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to rise up and begin to talk to God. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my There is something that makes me come into your presence, my helper, my helper, my helper, my helper, hallelujah, there is something that makes me come into your There is something that makes me come into your presence, my situation <laughs> because he is your helper and not only is he your helper but he is also your hope and so begin to call upon him in this in that hopeless situation begin to call upon him in that helpless situation yes he is the strength to the weak yes he is the strength to the weak yes he is the hope of the hopeless yes he is the help of the helpless thou the ever present help in time of need we worship and we adore you we honor and we magnify you ancient of days we bow before you most high god lord you are he who knows you are he that understands the secret pains of your children you know the hopeless situations your children are battling with. Them. You know the hopeless situation your children are facing. That's the reason why, Lord, we invite you today. Thou the help of the helpless. Thou the hope of the hopeless. Arise, O oh God, in their situations. Arise, O oh Lord, in their circumstances. Thou the God that does this around me. Turn around every hopeless situation. Turn around every hopeless situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you visited a mother and Mary in their hopeless situation. And suddenly you turn that very hopeless situation around, oh God. And they that were weeping, and they that were mourning, suddenly began to celebrate. For when the helper of the helpless appears, Sorrow, there shall be rejoicing. Instead of our sadness, there shall be dancing. Thou, the helper of the helpless, arise. Turn the situations of your friends and daughters around. Turn our helpless situations around. Turn our hopeless situations around. Where there is no life, you declare you are the resurrection and life. Lord, bring life. We are the original life. Bring life, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are the original family. We are the original son. Lord, bring healing. Lord, speak healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are the original brother. We are the original Lord, you are the peace. You say in this world you will have trouble. 
Help me by the power of your Holy Spirit to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name I pray. And again, if you are blessed by our message and that you need a prayer or you need a word of encouragement or counseling, you can reach us with this telephone number plus three zero six nine five five zero zero six one nine two. I repeat again plus three zero six nine five five zero zero six one nine two. Do not forget to invite your friends. Share our link with them. And God will bless us to do that. Amen.